join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. Growing up under the whispering Virginia pines on a modest farm where fields of tobacco and cotton stretched wide and long, the young girl named Gladys May West knew that with every row she helped plant, with every leaf she picked, her future lay somewhere beyond the furrows. The rhythms of farm life, sunrise, toil, dust, dusk, gave shape to her early years, but they did not hold her dreams. Even as a child in the segregated schools of Sutherland, Virginia, she carried within her a quiet certainty. She would get out. She would learn. And she would do something more. What she could not have known then was the size of her eventual footprint, the mathematical models she built, the data she processed in secret laboratories, the theories she helped turn into orbiting satellites would one day enable a technology used by billions every day. Yet she would remain for decades a hidden figure, uncelebrated it, passed over until the world began to catch up to her significance. It is not simply the story of Gladys West. It is the story of years of genius made invisible, of credit given elsewhere, and of how even the most profound breakthroughs can be quietly built in the shadow. It is the story of how the blueprint for what we now take for granted, global positioning, navigation, map apps, finding our way home, was shaped by someone seldom spoken of in mainstream narratives, and then how that work was subsumed into a larger story sometimes without the acknowledgement it deserved. It is, in short, a tale of what was stolen, not in the sense of outright theft by one person, but in the sense of erasure by a system, the erasure of a black woman's blueprint for our modern GPS-enabled world. Born on October 27, 1930, in Dinwiddie or Sutherland County, Virginia, Gladys May Brown was the daughter of sharecroppers and the granddaughter of an enslaved person. Her childhood involved long walks through woods to a one-room segregated school and summers in the fields that taught her early the meaning of hard work. She excelled academically, becoming valedictorian of her high school class and earning a scholarship to the historically black institution Virginia State University, then Virginia State College, where she studied mathematics. She earned her bachelor's degree in 1952 and a master's in mathematics by 1955. After teaching for a brief period in segregated schools, she accepted a job in 1956 at the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division, then the Naval Proving Ground in Dahlgren, Virginia, becoming only the second black woman ever hired there and one of only a handful of black employees. It was a remote outpost of the United States Navy, great concrete buildings surrounded by woods, with a hush of classification and the whir of early computers masked transformational work. West recalled entering a world where the coffee mugs mingled, but the social circles did not, where she was quietly aware she would need to be the best. I started to think to myself that I'll be a role model, as the black me, as West, to be the best I can be, she later said. At Dahlgren, her skill set found fertile ground. In the early 1960s, she participated in a major study on Pluto's motion relative to Neptune, a computational feat that required programming an IBM 7030 stretch computer for billions of calculations and 100 hours of runtime. This work, though impressive, was only preparation for the larger challenge, determining the shape of the Earth itself from space and using that understanding to locate objects on or above its surface with unprecedented accuracy. To appreciate this feat, one must understand the problem. The Earth is not a perfect sphere. It is slightly flattened to the poles, bulging at the equator, and its surface is uneven from the tug of various gravitational forces, tides, the pull of the moon and sun, and internal geology. This complex shape, called the geoid, needed to be modeled precisely for any satellite-based navigation system to work reliably. West and her colleagues began the work of constructing such a model, feeding in satellite altimeter data, developing algorithms to correct for tidal and gravitational distortion, programming computers to process huge datasets. According to researchers, by the mid-1970s through the 1980s, West programmed an IBM 7030 stretch computer to deliver increasingly refined calculations for an extremely accurate geodetic Earth model, optimized for what ultimately became the Global Positioning System, GPS orbit. By 1978, the first experimental satellites of the Navstar GPS program had launched, 
and by 1993, the system was fully operational with its 24 satellite constellation. The foundations of GPS date back even further to the 1960s with the Navy's transit and timation projects, which provided early satellite navigation and accurate clock reference, respectively. West's contribution came largely via her geodesy modeling work conducted at Dahlgren for the U.S. Navy and Department of Defense. According to Britannica, she and her team created a program that could precisely calculate the orbits of satellites. These calculations made it possible to determine a model for the exact shape of Earth, called a geoid. It is this model that allows the GPS system to make accurate calculations of any place on Earth. Yet the story of how that blueprint was taken onward, credited elsewhere, and how West's name remained off the marquee for so long is the story of erasure and extraction. When the larger narrative of GPS was written, names such as Bradford Parkinson, Roger L. Easton, and Ivan A. Getting were cited as the fathers of GPS. Meanwhile, West's name remained obscure. Why? The technology was driven by the military, by contractors, by complex classification. Her work was not in public relations. It fit the pattern of many black women in STEM whose efforts were vital, yet invisible. Despite her decades of service at Dahlgren, she worked there 42 years, retiring in 1998, and later earning a PhD in public administration at age 70. West's recognition came belatedly. In 2018, she was inducted into the United States Air Force Hall of Fame. The question remains, if her work was so central, why had her narrative remained invisible so long? The answer lies in intersecting dynamics of race, gender, and labeled importance. By the late 20th and early 21st century, civilian exposure to GPS exploded. No longer were satellite navigation systems locked behind military barriers. They entered cars, handheld devices, smartphones, fleets, even watches. Around 2000, the U.S. ended the policy known as selective availability, which intentionally degraded civilian signal precision, opening the door to broad, high-accuracy use. As the technology commodified, its origins became part of popular culture, the GPS system we use every day. But the people whose mathematical labor produced the necessary algorithms and models rarely got their names in plaques or textbooks. West herself reflected on this, saying, We never thought about it being transferred to civilian life, so that was a pleasant surprise. But she also acknowledged the extra burden of being a black woman in that era. As a black woman, that's another level we have to prove to a society that hasn't accepted you for what you are. I kept trying to prove that I was as good as you are. The notion of stealing the blueprint in the subtitle of this article is meant to capture a layered truth. It is not necessarily that an individual stole documents from her desk, but that the legacy of her blueprint, her models, her algorithms, her data processing systems was woven into the larger GPS architecture without her receiving the central recognition. The blueprint became public, commercial, global. But the person behind part of it remained hidden. When the spotlight finally came, it came decades later, after the broader machine of history had moved on, after commercialization had taken off, and after dozens of companies, apps, devices, and industries had profited from the foundational work she helped produce. This kind of structural invisibility has wide-ranging consequences. For one, it distorts the story we tell about innovation, that breakthroughs come from isolated geniuses, often men, often white. It overlooks how many people, particularly women of color, labored often in contexts of segregation or structural bias, to push innovation forward. It means that young people from underrepresented backgrounds lack role models whose lives resemble theirs. And it means that the blueprint of modern navigation, the ability to know exactly where you are on the planet, at any moment, in any smartphone, carries within it a hidden history. There is power in recognition. When Gladys West's contributions received attention, through features, induction ceremonies, articles, something shifted. The narrative cracked. It gave new texture to our understanding of GPS. Yes, satellites and atomic clocks. Yes, funding and military systems. But also the long nights of data entry, the logic of programming huge computers by hand, the mental models of Earth's bulges and tides, the determination of a young black woman 
who refuse to stay in the field. It helps us see how technology is social, how it is built by people, how those people matter. What might this mean for our current technological age? When we think about artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing, nanotech, who are the Gladys West in those fields today, whose names are missing from the plaques, whose contributions are quietly absorbed, whose stories haven't yet surfaced? Recognizing this story is not just about the past, but about how we build our future. As we reach for our phones, open our map apps, ask for directions, hail rides, track packages, run marathons with wearable tech, we harness the power of GPS. But embedded within that convenience is the contribution of Gladys West's blueprint, the algorithms, the earth models, the precise geodesy work that enabled satellites to tell us you are here. Nameless no more. The arc of her journey reminds us of something sustaining, that even in fields where recognition is denied or delayed, sustained excellence and quiet determination matter. That walking away from the farm didn't mean forgetting the farm. It meant bringing with you the values of discipline, curiosity, and persistence. That the maths you don't see, gravity corrections, tidal deviations, altimeter data, are as vital to modern navigation as the satellites themselves. So the next time you tap the screen, ask yourself, who enabled the map you rely on? And in that moment, spare a thought for Gladys May West, for the blueprint she drew, for the paths she helped illuminate, for the hidden figure who quietly guided us home.